wanted to talk to Bob Chapman, uh, formerly with military intelligence, and then had the biggest private silver and gold brokerage firm, and uh, put out the Gary Allen report and the book, uh, None Dare Call It Conspiracy. He's been fighting for close to 50 years against the global crime syndicate, and unfortunately, stuff he talked about 40 years ago has come true now. I wanted to talk about uh, cases of people like Whitey Bulger, now supposedly caught. He's really been in a quasi-witness protection program. This horrible murdering gangster who, of course, we later learned, uh, worked for the FBI, was protected by them. Uh, that's how they control organized crime is by first telling us it didn't exist back in the 50s and, and, then, and then once the public wised up to that selectively busting certain groups it's why they made alcohol illegal was to make more profits in prohibition it's why they made narcotics illegal criminals want things illegal so there's a black market and, and, and now how many CIA aircraft, CIA aircraft have crashed how many mega banks have been caught with hundreds of billions in laundered money and running the drug aircraft uh, and I remember Sally Costello, DEA agent, almost six years ago on this show, saying that Los Zetas is CIA funded. They tried to hire me to train them. There's going to be a new war in Mexico as they shut down their competition over the $500 billion a year in narcotics coming through Mexico alone into the rest of North uh, America, Canada, the, the U.S., and other points is delivered through. And uh, then he said a couple years ago before they set him up and put him in prison uh, that... They're, they're shipping guns to Mexico to destabilize things. And he knew because uh, he was a gun dealer. And uh, they tried to recruit him to train Los Zetas, as he'd done in Latin America training other groups, and he went to prison. Uh, well, now it, it all comes out in the last few months, uh, Operation Fast and Furious. The ATF's been caught lying to Congress, the head of the ATF, saying they didn't know. It turns out they had cameras shipping them. Uh, they, they, they ordered the whole thing just as ATF officers that went public a few months ago, risking their lives. I'm here to tell you, the ATF is a real mafia, the most criminal federal agency I know of. That's in a group of CIA and FBI people. But again, it's, it's all compartmentalized. The good guys, they compartmentalize and kind of low-level work. The bad guys get promoted to the top. And, and, and this came out with a Whitey Bulger that, 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 that he was paying 25% of the hundreds of millions he made uh, running the, the Irish mob on the East Coast to the FBI and even setting up people in his own organization for snacks. That's what the FBI calls it. When they wanted bigger cuts, they burned their own people, and Bulger would act like he didn't know what was happening to his Irish brotherhood. And it's the same thing with the Italian mafia, all these mafias. So I wanted to get Bob Chapman's take on that, because when you've got investors' business daily, this is very exciting. I talked about this in the first hour. Headline was Fast and Furious, a... Uh, gun control plot. Well, we have the answer to that, a detailed report. Going back to our previous reports today, Obama administration caught running false flag against Second Amendment. So uh, this is super, super important news. And this link, the eight-page article by Watson needs to get out to everybody because the ATF was going to get abolished in 93, so they pulled off that whole uh, Waco thing that, you know, oh, look, we have extremists we've got to deal with. And then there was footage of them loading their cameras saying, oh, we've got to demonize, uh, you know, these people to get more funding. Ha, 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 this is going to be great. Pulled up, open fire, had the whole thing planned from the beginning. Uh, the, the Davidians fought back. When the ATF put their hands up, the Davidians stopped. If they shot a bunch of men, women, and children, not saying the Davidians were perfect. They were a little weird. Most of it was made up. And uh, the ATFs ran off like cowards and went and got the military and others and came back and burned the place down. And they had Delta Force there shooting everybody. And that even came out in congressional hearings. Delta Force, quote, pulling triggers. I don't need that report to tell me that. I've got the flare footage of them behind the Bradleys in classic uh, infantry fashion with the loudspeaker saying, come out during the fire. And when the Davidians ran out, some of them with kids, they double tapped them and then would run over them with tanks. Something like running over that baby a couple times. It's an American enemy. Uh, and, then they, and then they had the rest of the kids hiding out in a little concrete church records vault. Delta Force went in, put that bomb right on the roof, <laughs> shot in there with that shape charge, splattered them into soup. And it was just, 
posing with skulls, Delta Force and the Army, the tank drivers, they had the skulls and took photos. The ATF had skulls on their desk. Ah, nothing like bagging an American. Nothing like killing a one-year-old baby. Oorah. And then folks got upset about that, what these real men did. So the ATF was even admitted on Discovery Channel. They said it was a coincidence. Uh, cooked a rider truck with fuel oil six months before and tested it out in the desert. And when local cops found out about that in Oklahoma City, well, they had to be killed, of course. We've got Colonel Craig Roberts coming on to talk about that next week. Uh, but I'm sorry, Bob. I'm now digressing. I was just getting into how organized crime really works and who really runs it. At the end of the day, you find out Wall Street gets all, almost all the money. And then they even own the private prisons that when they catch you using their drugs at the retail level, they put you in the prison working for 25 cents an hour, competing with everybody else's jobs. And the good old boys, they all love it, even though they're losing their jobs, Bob Chapman. Is that an accurate boil down of what we're dealing with here? It certainly is. And I, I came from Boston, and uh, I knew Whitey Bulger when I was a teenager. That's why I raised it. You told me that about a decade ago. Uh, please continue. And uh, he belonged to a group they called the Winter Hill Gang. And my mom and dad grew up in Winter Hill. And it just so happens when they were growing up, there was another fellow <coughs> who lived across the street from my mom. And his name was Ponzi. And he eventually moved to New Jersey. It was quite a colorful section. It was very poor Italian, Irish, Greek, you know, the, the, the melting pot, so to speak. Uh, now, I didn't well, know that, that the famous uh, Ponzi scheme guy uh, grew up in your neighborhood. That, well, it was in there. Yeah, he was before you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but anyway, uh, I knew Whitey. Uh, he was just another criminal, and uh, there were lots of kids like that. And he went to prison, and he got trained well there, and he became a real pro. Um, the, the program that they set up uh, with the FBI, Conley, who is now in prison, uh, the FBI agent, who I guess what you would call him his handler, um, they finally caught him uh, in the crossfire, we'll call it. But the whole thing was an FBI operation, and this used to happen all the time. Oh, yeah, they only busted it when the state police got sick of him killing cops, so they went ahead and busted him, and so then they spirited him off, let him go into a secret witness protection program. Why do you think they're busting him now? They knew where he was all along, Bob. And that's right, and I, I, I think um, the whole thing got long in the tooth. They looked like idiots because they couldn't find him. And, uh, you know, the easy excuse is he was with a woman, and uh, they didn't change their pattern of life. Uh, and so they, they were easy to take down. I mean, if you know how to look for people, and there are people who know how to do that, and I do. You know, I'm uh, pretty good at it. The government taught me well. Yeah, you're but, hiding out. <laughs> well, I always am because, you know, uh, I get down to brass tacks, and... I've been threatened by the government before, and I believe them. That's right. We don't. Uh, we don't call you. You call us, and every time from a different number. We don't even. We're not, uh, you're in a nice third world country right now, Bob. But but uh, and uh, Bob, uh, now that's because all the stuff they tried to do to you, you 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 have uh, escaped their orbit for now. But but I interrupted you. Let's get back to Whitey Bulger and 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 the FBI operation and and how they flush just one of the mid level guys. But it's admitted money going right up to the top. But. Uh, again, we were told the Costa Nostra doesn't exist. Well, that's right. Uh, it didn't exist. Uh, that uh, My father's brother belonged to the Costa Nostra. And uh, he was the biggest bookmaker in Boston. Of course, it was illegal in those days. And now it's legal. And uh, so it's okay. But um, uh, I'm very, very familiar with both sides of the fence. And when I was 16, I decided, uh, both sides of the fence being the Italian and the Irish, uh, quite frankly, I'm half Irish and half Italian. And, uh, and so I decided at 16 years old that I didn't want to get involved in that life. And I did very, very well in school, and I turned out to be somebody else. And I'm very, very happy because many of the people who I grew up with who continued in that lifestyle, um, you know, they're in their 70s now, and they're... Uh, they're very unhappy that they didn't try it another way. And so uh, for all of you listening, uh, re believe me, crime does not pay. 
unfortunately, the crime is not only committed by criminals, but criminals in banking, Wall Street, Washington, corporate America, and lots of other places, too. Stay there, Bob. I want to get back into, from your research, uh, living around this as a young person, then being in intelligence, then in, in, in brokerage and banking and you know, knowing Ollie North, all of them. Uh, how, how the power structure in the U.S., we know it's Interpol overseas, how they control the organized crime syndicates. We'll be right back with Bob Chapman, our guest. We'll get into the economy, and I promise your phone calls stay with us. With uh, Bob on that whole point of organized crime. Looking at the architecture, do you agree with my historical analysis that many others agree? I mean, well, it's on record, really, that, that, that the crime syndicates run by the big mega banks, the robber barons, many of which were openly involved uh, in opium importation, cocaine, all of it. They just made it all illegal because they could make 100 times the profit off of it. And this is the big elephant in the living room. This is the big giant fraud. And, of course, the ATF is shipping guns down to Mexico to track them back here and blame the Second Amendment. Of course, uh, government is uh, running and controlling the mafias and deciding who, who rises and who falls. I mean, how many examples do we have to get, Bob? What's your view on that? Well, uh, they have to keep on trying because what they've done is relatively unsuccessful. Uh, a good example is the uh, war, the narcotics war along the border with Mexico and in a couple of other places in Mexico as well. And um, th the whole thing is all about uh, people in Mexico and uh, the CIA taking over the drug operations. That's really what it's about. And there's an election coming up in about a year and a half in Mexico and the House and the Senate are both controlled by PRI, which is the party that is not in the presidency uh, presently. And uh, they will win the presidency. Uh, that's the way things work there. And uh, that whole thing will be simmered down because the other group that's coming in doesn't want that kind of thing going on. The thing being the warfare. You know, innocent people get killed. And I've lived in Mexico, so... I know what it's all about. Um, as far as uh, the, uh, the bankers, look, you can't have any kind of an operation without having a bank to transfer money to put your money into. These are the people who are behind the whole thing. These are the people who make it work. And from time to time, you see Citigroup and uh, now it's Wachovia. And, you know, every once in a while, four or five years, they'll take down a major bank uh, that they say laundered $250 billion and they'll fine them $5 billion and it'll all go away. Yeah, well, no Wells Fargo was $376 billion. They paid a $100 million fine. That's 0.3%, Bob. And you get to keep $275 billion. It's just like Goldman Sachs. They paid a fine and didn't admit nor deny to the SEC. Paid a fine, the seven hundred and seventy million, I think the figure was, and they stole five billion. <laughs> so they got to keep four billion. Uh, and and this uh, uh, this character, this uh, uh, fellow, the Oracle of Omaha, uh, he in his his company, uh, they cheated the U.S. government in taxes for three hundred million. And they made a deal with the SEC. We'll pay a hundred million. We keep the other two. And they said, okay. And that's because over the years they've gotten their alumni into all the regulatory positions, and so the sky's the limit. But at a certain point, uh, they destroy the golden goose that lays the uh, golden golden eggs, Bob. And that brings me to the next point. Uh, what's your view on the latest developments in Greece and now it spreading as we knew it was designed to? Uh, to uh, Italy. From my research, I know you've been over there and lived over there as well, the Italians are not going to go along with austerity. They're going to even be more, not just violent in the streets, they're going to do a lot of dirty tricks and things uh, to not uh, uh, pay Goldman Sachs uh, money they don't owe. That's right. And I think Max has probably told you on his programs with you that he and uh, and some attorneys uh, in Greece have bought a lawsuit or are going to bring a lawsuit against Goldman Sachs. And I think that's wonderful. 
And uh, now uh, Senate 11's uh, committee uh, has put out, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of pages of testimony, and they forced the uh, Justice Department to go after Goldman Sachs. Whether they'll bring criminal indictments remains to be seen, but I think that there's a possibility that they will, and that would blow it upside down. Well, I mean, it's, something's got to give because Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, uh, Citibank, others, they're not slowing down on any of this. They're actually going faster now, and I guess it's just their nature. They just can't help themselves, can they, Bob? And this is their last profit opportunity before they take the system down. And then on top of that, launch the new global carbon tax system. We're going to come back with your phone calls and get into a host of other news. What are some of the other issues you think are most important? Uh, you know, uh, let's plant the hook there so folks know what's coming up. Well, I think the situation in Europe is uh, the, the, the first order of the day. And uh, I guess it's uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, they're going to have an election uh, uh, referendum uh, vote in the House and the Senate, particularly the House, on accepting the terms of the uh, offering that's made by, been made by the EU, the banks, and the IMF. And I don't think they're going to accept it. And as you said, it's trouble starting in Italy. And we just saw the films over the last couple of weeks of what went on in Spain, particularly the police brutality was awful. And, and so it's a cauldron uh, throughout Europe of unemployment, low living standards, and that's going to spread throughout the whole European Union. And it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse, just like we're experiencing in America. And uh, there are some countries that have been spared uh, uh, Chile, because uh, they had an earthquake. But other than that, they're doing well. Brazil, as uh, Max had mentioned earlier, and Canada, and even Mexico, with its problems along the border, uh, are doing well. But the, most of the world has got problems, including China. And so it's going to be a grinding, grinding uh, situation for, the, for years and how long, I don't know. But do I you do overall... Know it's gonna be. Sorry, go ahead. You know, I remember uh, you and I and uh, Paul Craig Roberts were on, and this is a couple of years ago, and you said, well, I, I think it probably will happen in the next six months. And Paul Craig Roberts and I both said, no, uh, it's going to take longer, and nothing ever is done as quickly as you think, even though you clearly can see what the future is offering us. And these people in charge are not dumb, and they're going to try to drag this thing out as long as possible, and it's going to get lower and lower and lower in living standards along the way. Yeah, that was in October of 2008. It was so bad. I was like, my gosh, they're talking about martial law. But it is true. They like to slowly bleed us, uh, kind of like a vampire sneaking up to the bedside at night and chewing on your feet. Uh, and, or, 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 you know, a mosquito giving you some deadening while it sucks the blood. And uh, that's the inside baseball. They're backing off on oil prices right now because they, you know, they take two steps forward, but when we resist, they step back a foot or even two. And, and uh, Bob, do you agree that really the, 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 that the awakening is a great bounty right now and that more and more of the globalists who had been pretty much uh, invincible are, are, are beginning to stumble more and more? And Jim Tucker's intel, which has always proven to be flawless, directly from Bilderberg, that they are panicking and scared. And more and more, they don't have a Midas touch. Everything they turn, uh, everything they touch turns into a pile of steaming uh, horse dung. Well, you said not too long ago, we're breathing down their collar. And we are. I mean, the things that we've accomplished in Europe in informing people, never mind in America, has been colossal especially in Greece, and uh, Max has been over there in person and, and done a great deal to make people understand the situation. And this is spreading, and we're doing our job. We're doing a good job, and if we do it good enough, we're going to stop these people. And they are frightened, and they are being pushed to do things they yeah. don't want to do quickly and already. Well, let's go to the calls, but I'll just add this little caveat uh, to all of that. People get mad, and they tend to start losing faith when they 
see poll after poll where Ron Paul wins straw polls and then he's not included on the national news or where he wins the official scientific poll so they have a little fake internet poll and don't even include him and then he loses that shows they're scared that shows they're trying to hide things that shows that that they're getting desperate because they are engaging uh in such crazy things uh let's go ahead and go to david in ohio david you're on the air uh ditto alex and bob can you hear me okay yes sir welcome thanks for holding so long uh yeah max i uh, i wanted to ask max a couple of questions i'll just reword it but yeah you max get bob now he knows as much or more go ahead <laughs> well if, if max you. is still if, if max is still listening i just wanted to say would you please get bill still on your show and Alex, I had emailed you. I had uh, asked a request if you could get Byron Dale on your show. This, uh, uh, you know, you're talking about things you can do now, alternative methods and systems. Uh, Byron is currently in the state house in Minnesota, trying to get a state bank of Minnesota there. And we have uh, covered state banks. We have interviewed still, but state banks are a very good idea. Anything? Any questions or other comments, David? Uh, well, the other question I had was. Um, uh, I was just going to tease Max. He had made some predictions about that volcano last year, and all his predictions came right. And uh, and I just wanted to say uh, hi to my brother Jim in Orofino, Idaho. He's your biggest fan, Alex. Well, thank you so much, David. Yeah, Max said that historically, uh, big volcanoes blowing up and uh, uh, signify revolution, and that did start up in uh, Europe. But I think he was being more tongue in cheek. But uh, Max is a character, uh, a real character. You ought to know him behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he's even crazier than I am. Uh, Sean in Australia, you're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead. Yeah, hello, Alex. Look, um, this was originally for Max as well because he's very Listen, your, your phone is almost unintelligible. Uh, 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 are you on a speakerphone? I'm on Scott. You're okay. Just, just get your mouth. Whisper into the microphone and we'll be able to hear you. Uh, okay. Well, this one's originally for Max. And what I wanted to say was um, what I see happening is that besides taking the public infrastructure and the utilities in Greece, I suspect that the real deal is that they actually you know, want to create an ultimatum where they trade debt for some of the Greek islands to possibly create little fantasy pleasure lands for themselves. Um, is this... Is this something that people have looked into because, uh, of course, it would be a contemporary example of what you covered back in America Destroyed by Design when you were a young, handsome go-getter, Alex. So, uh, <laughs> well, I, I heard, I heard about something that. about America Destroyed by Design, but, Bob, did you get that question? Well, I did get a part about Greece, and I think from the very beginning... Uh, they were, they wanted to rape Greece. I, I think they liked the territory. And the um, internationalists have always been crazy about southern Greece and Crete. And uh, so I think that they had that in mind. If you notice, as Mr. Samaras said, uh, he's the head of the uh, other Democratic Party, we'll call it. I forget the name of it. And uh, he said that, why didn't you do that? with Portugal and Ireland? And I think that's a very good question. Uh, they weren't asked to collateralize their debt with anything, and Greece was. Yes, I think the gentleman from Australia is correct. Uh, I think they had designs. They, they wanted to take everything in the country because they wanted it. Well, that's what the IMF and World Bank have done in, in, in Latin America, uh, in Africa and Asia. They openly get the national parks and things and then build uh, you know, casinos and, 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 and luxury parks on them and, and uh, you know, mining operations. But, but, but yes, the U.S. land that we cover in America, Troy by Design, is pledged, not just the national parks, but, quote, buffer zones around them to the UN. I mean, that's on record. Even National Geographic, you know, uh, covered that a decade ago, but but put it in a good light saying how wonderful uh, all of this is. And I remember articles in mainstream news uh, in the last um, six months where it admitted that in one case it had a multi-billionaire hedge fund guy uh, who who Greece owed a couple billion to, but, but through fraud, he'd sold them fraudulent stuff. And, and he was saying 
give me this island and I'll forgive you the two billion. So in, so in some cases, the banksters are physically, individually, this is over 600 islands around Greece, very beautiful. Uh, I've never been there. My parents love to go there. They said it's the most beautiful place in the world. And they're actually, that's where the Roman emperors like to vacation. They're openly giving individuals the infrastructure. And that reminds me of what... Uh, Max talked about he went in the wrong hotel when he first got to Greece last week and walked into this big international, uh, you know, business association meeting. And there was Steve Forbes and who knew Max from years ago on Wall Street he said, Max, this is great. We're taking everything over. Pennies on the dollar. It's ours. Thinking he was part of the. And so like like vultures, the banksters are all there perching. And they're even using American bailout money to then go in and, and buy off the government, and then they get the private islands. I mean, these guys are, are a bunch of uh, whitey bulgers. Well, that was the International Chamber of Commerce. And if you look back in the history of the Forbes family, you'll find out that they made their money running drugs for the British from I uh, India over to China in the early 1800s. That's right. The Forbes are the uh, one of the big uh, opium families on record. That's not even a hidden yeah. thing. Well, the public doesn't know it, and we're telling them. Well, come on. Shipping heroin in is friendly. The Forbes are great people, especially when the old man Forbes would ride around. Well, I'm not going to get into it. Whatever. What, what no, he, I'm not either. What he does privately. <laughs> <you know. laughs> it's just, why, why do we let such scum rule us? Uh, let's go. It's ahead. Incredible. It's incredible. George in Connecticut. George, you're on the air. Go ahead. I, I have one statement, but I also wanted you to know that we don't have to feel so bad, that, uh, 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 Alex, because uh, there was a big report on that, uh, that uh, vaccine situation on uh, Gary Knoll, and he has 10 million uh, listeners, so it's getting out there bad. But the thing I wanted to say is we should start a, a manifesto. Almost any, any big organization starts a manifesto against the banksters, and our, and our logo should be the guillotine. And we should sort of get cutouts and paste and then basically spray paint it on the sides of their cars when they're not in the car so they get the idea that we're after their butts. Very well said. We are after their butts. Uh, any, any, anything else, sir? No, that's it. But I just want to let you know it's getting out there. And, and it's, it's spreading. I, I, I monitor all types of radio stations from left to right. And I'm just amazed how the how all different aspects you're talking about are exploding across the spectrum. So it's it's about over. But when, when everybody's talking about it, it's about over. But also one other thing, I took a survey uh, for uh, stay there, stay there, George, and then. Let's uh, go back now to George in Connecticut. George, you brought up the point, and and I monitor talk radio. I have the unique position. Uh, to be well known uh, for being on a lot of national TV and internet and all that, to where people know me. So, so they'll actually say, "Hey, I know what's going on," and, and and it's a lot of people, you know, respond. It's kind of a radar or sonar ping. But you're saying you hear the same thing, and I hear it on talk radio. People are now really starting to get that it's mega corporations that aren't free market that control both parties. Bob Chapman, that's very exciting. It certainly is because. This is the genesis of the whole thing. Corporatist fascism from the very beginning. Uh, you know, I think that Europe was a trial run for what we're seeing today. And they control, as you said, both houses, Wall Street banking, corporate America, transnational corporations, uh, the, the uh, law enforcement agencies, and it just goes on and on. And it's going to be their arrogance will be their undoing. I want to go to JB and Matt, but George, you were talking about a survey when we went to break? Yes, uh, I got a survey in my, my email. It was, I think it was Newsweek. And I did the survey, and it turned out Ron Paul turned out to be 61.3% uh, of all uh, questioners who answered the thing uh, picked Ron Paul. And I found that amazing because... On all the conservative radio stations I listened to yesterday, not one of them even mentioned him as a viable candidate. No, 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 no. there's a talking point. Monitoring yeah. three local shows this morning, well, San Antonio and Austin, I heard them all say, sorry to tell you, Ron Paul's not viable. He's struggling to even be relevant when he's winning almost every poll. It's a total hoax. There's a talking point. These people are scum. Well, it was also on the on the left wing NPR. I was listening this morning, and I actually called them up and brought, wanted to bring this point up because they didn't they didn't even mention him as a Republican uh, uh, viable candidate. 
and they said, oh, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, Rockefeller Radio <laughs> wouldn't let you on. God bless you. No, I know. And it, it, it doesn't matter, though. Ron Paul's hitting the barbed wire. Don't be mad if he doesn't win. He wins in the arena of ideas. Let's jam in, uh, let's jam in JB and Tejas. JB, you're on the air with uh, Bob Chapman. Go ahead. Jones, thank you very much, sir. Thank Listen, you. Uh, I, I'd like to say I appreciate everything you're doing in Houston here. Uh, 55.4 Mikasa Broadcasting is playing all of your documentaries and all your your films and everything. What channel is that, sir? That's 55.4 in Houston, Texas. Mikasa Broadcasting. And they every night they play. Uh, they played the Aaron Rousseau interview. They played the end game. They played 9/11. They played the one about the monetary. What policy. is 55.4? I didn't. Uh, is that AM? well? That's a, that's a digital station, a TV. You know the new. Oh yeah, TV digital station. TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they play the entire film and they let it roll. Something's going on because all over the country, L.A., California, Massachusetts, Texas, I've had family, friends, people in Tyler say mainline TV, like like ABC is playing this show. So there are a lot of little silent people out there who are regionally getting the word out, Bob. I'm telling you, the revolution's in full swing. It certainly is, and uh, we just got to work harder, and uh, we're going to win. We're going to win big. JB, I want to hear a little bit more from you. We'll have time for you to finish up, and then Matt, back in one minute, internet only, prisonplanet.tv, the Infowars.com stream, and Matt uh, with Bob Chapman right now. Uh, JB, uh, is that the only point you had that uh, we're on this digital TV station down in uh, Houston? Well, I can't say enough about them doing that. It's Mikasa of Broadcasting. Uh, it's a Spanish station, and they only talk English. It's a very breakthrough station. It's out of sight, and uh, your your films are uh, very, very illuminating and, and, and extremely scary uh, to my friends watching it. They go, I can't believe this is coming true. And I said, well, look at this 9-11. Look at this end game. Look at this film. They just freak out, totally freak out. They can't believe it. Yeah, it's, uh, there's another fellow uh, who owns a business network down there that's on cable there, but also other parts of the world. And I know they air my stuff down there, and that's how it spreads. I don't think that's the same person, uh, but so many great people. But I'm telling you, I'm getting calls now and emails all over the country going, the nightly news just ended, and... American Idol didn't come on. It was it was your it was today's TV show off the web cut up, commercial free for three hours. I mean I mean this stuff's pouring in. Bob, this is how revolutions of ideas really happen. People have got it. They they know what's happening. The establishment's going to ignore it. But just just that this is happening with my show. Imagine what else is going on, Bob Chapman. It's exhilarating. And that's why we have to keep on plugging all of us, all the listeners. you got to spread the word, let the, the world know the truth of what's going on. That's all we need. That's all we need. Well, I'll tell you what's really exhilarating is I don't want to die. I'm willing to die if they kill me or set me up, but it's not fun. I like living. And the fact that there's so many targets and so many leaders and so many well-spoken people now, Bob, they're not going to be able to shut us down. Nothing's going to stop us if we realize we're going to win. That's right, and we want thousands more. To be leaders. And to retire and play golf every day. Oh, I love that, man, I tell you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, JB. Uh, good to hear that report. We'll look into it. Uh, what's cool is I keep looking into these reports, and they're true. Uh, Matt in Ohio, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex and Bob. Thanks for taking my call. Um, one, one point and then uh, your comments on that. Um, I, personally, I think that the, uh, the TSA issue is, um, is a, a ready-made issue to spring someone like Ron Paul into the presidency. Uh, I think if he took a strong stance against it, you know, something like... You know, my first order of business as yeah. president would be to enforce the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, we're probably talking to Ron Paul tomorrow, I mean, uh, next week. And I, I, and during the breaks, I could probably get a hold of him privately as well. I'm going to say, look, you're great, you're awesome, but, you know, he does 10 million interviews, but then is very calm in him. He needs to get angry. People love it when he does it. He needs to attack, attack, attack. Is that what you're saying? He needs to call out. He, he does call out the tyranny, but, I mean, he needs to get hardcore. Is that what you're saying? Well, basically just to take a stance. I mean, if he said, you know, the first thing I would do 10 minutes after getting elected, I'd walk into the Oval Office, I'd place a call over to Janet and Napolitano, and I would end this tyranny in our airports, I think he'd get elected. 
because so many people are sick and tired of the TSA, and the president has full authority to stop with a single phone phone call. Absolutely. And no one else will do it. Absolutely. No one else will go on record to do that. If he did that, I think he would win. That's my thought. No, no, you brought up a great point. Uh, you got the last 30 seconds. Uh, we need to really... Uh, I mean, Ron Paul is being hardcore, but I think he re he needs to be even more hardcore. What do you think, Bob? I think you're right. He ha has to get a little vicious. I mean, we have the capability to be vicious verbally for a reason. That's right. We want to save the country and probably save the world in the process. Yeah, they're always telling us, don't be extreme, don't be angry, because that's what works, folks. Okay, that's what works. Bob, I God willing, we'll see you next Friday in the third hour. Thank you, Bob Chapman.